video demonstrate a midline posterior approach for the treatment of OS odontoidium via atlanto axial reduction, bone graft fusion, and internal fixation. This is a 50-year-old man suffering from four limbs numbness and weakness for about two years, and the physical examination. Found a decreased sensation to pinprick of the skin, and an increased muscle tension of the forelimbs. Preoperatively, anterior instability was noted on flexion X-ray examination. No instability was noted on extension X-ray. The sagittal CT scan showed a dystopic OS odontoidium. The MRI demonstrated that a dramatic compression of the cervical spinal cord and abnormal high signal intensity area in this region. The patient underwent a posterior approach for the treatment of this lesion via atlanto axial reduction, bone graft fusion, and internal fixation. The patient was put into a prone position with a midfield head frame. And the incision length was about six centimeter along the middle line. After incision of the skin, the subcutaneous tissue was cut by the unipolar electric knife, strictly along the middle line, in order to reduce the amount of bleeding. And then we exposed the posterior arch of C1 and the lamina of C2 by superior steel dissection. And then we can see the spinous process and a vertebral plate of axis. Posterior arch of atlas was isolated meticulously. After exposure of the lamina of C2, we prepared for the screw pass and tapping by freehand, and then twisted in a 2.8 centimeter pedicle screw on the left side of C2. Then the same procedure was performed on the other side, and then we prepared for the screw pass in C1 through arch by using a high-speed grading drill. It is very safe by using a high-speed grading drill to make a pedicle screw pass in C1. We grasped the posterior arch of C1 using forceps. In order to prevent its compression to the spinal cord during the twisting of the screws, the same procedure was performed on the other side. After the four screws were placed in the right place, the lateral X-ray indicated that the C1 and C2 were still in a dislocated position. Then we placed the rod and compressed the screw tails of C1 and C2, little by little, side by side. The lateral X-ray confirmed that the joint between C1 and C2 and the odontoid process were in the right position. After that, we prepared the bone graft surface by using low-speed drill to grain the surface of the bone graft bed. The allogenic bone combined with the autogenous bone were put onto the surface of the bone graft bed. The bone marrow blood was spread at the bone graft bed, that was drawn from the iliac bone. At last, we placed a drainage tube and sutured the incision and finished the operation. Post-operative CT indicated the satisfactory reduction of C1 and C2 articulars, and a post-operative MRR suggested that the compression of the cervical spinal cord was relieved, and the signal of the CSF around this area was clear and continuous.